can I pause for a second and, and just note that uh, we got Brian on here who's getting uh, Congressman Massey on, and our typical lineup includes like homeless people that believe in Bigfoot. <laughs> Welcome to the Brian Nichols Show, your source for common sense politics on the We Are Libertarians Network. The Brian Nichols Show is the fastest growing liberty podcast that brings together people from all means of political thought as we seek to have meaningful conversations about the issues you care about. At the Brian Nichols Show, our goal is to leave the audience educated, enlightened, and informed. And now your host, Brian Nichols. Well, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining us here on today's special bonus episode of The Brian Nichols Show. It's my birthday, so I said, hey, why not give you guys a sneak peek of what to expect with The Brian Nichols Show 2.0. That's right, folks. We're adding video to the program. As you can see, we have the studio nearly complete. I am so excited to be bringing you guys some awesome new content and honestly, it's a great opportunity for us, not only as a program, but also as an audience to really start to make a difference. And that's what we've been focusing on the Brian Nichols Show going for the past three years now. And as we incorporate video and we continue to grow the program, guys, strap in. We are we, we have so much to look forward to. And I am so excited for you guys to be joining us as we continue that journey. So for our special bonus episode today, I am inviting Britt from the Freckles and Britt show. Yes, I have had the chance to join Britt and uh, her good friend Freckles on their amazing, shall I say, fabulous program in the past. And uh, what a great opportunity for Britt to bro join the program today to focus on how words matter. Yes, we talk about um, the ideas and words and how definitions have changed, but more importantly, how that will help, well, not necessarily help, but rather hinder our ability to reach new people. So a great opportunity for us to learn how to reach new people, but also how to make sure we focus on defining what we're talking about so we don't have the gray area. So with that being said, on to the show, Britt from the Freckles and Britt Show here on The Brian Nichols Show. Hi, thanks so much for having me on. I'm so excited. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining the program. Looking forward to having a conversation. I've had the opportunity to join you a few times over on your show with the amazing Freckled, uh, who has been doing a lot of great work, as have you, helping raise up uh, the, the messages that we're focusing on here in the Greater Liberty Movement, ones of limited government, personal responsibility, peace, freedom, love, and uh, yeah, all that fun stuff in between. So how about this, Britt? I had the chance to introduce myself to your audience. Let's introduce you to the Brian Nichols Show audience. Who are you and what got you into this magical world of politics in liberty that you find yourself in? Oh my gosh. Hi. So uh, I am Britt. Uh, you guys have maybe have seen me on Twitter at Tweets by Britt, everywhere else, Salt by Britt. Um, now I'm on Clubhouse a lot, and I'm one half of the almost defunct Freckles and Brit show. So um, that's, that's I think, where people probably know me from. Or maybe you've seen me as the crazy lady with her hair up in a knot at Trader Joe's. I don't know. Could be that. Um, <laughs> so. So you mentioned, and I mean, you interrupt, the, the, the almost done Freckles and Brit show. Now that you said that before, as we started to record here, and that caught me off guard. So Brit, what's going on? Are, are things ending between you and Freckles? So, well, no, actually, Freckles and I are entering a new phase in our relationship. This Friday will be the very last episode of the Freckles and Brit show, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to have Jess for Liberty as our guest. Great, great guest to go out on. Um... And we will be back June 4th with a new format, new lineup. Everything's going to be new, except it's just going to be, you know, the same old Freckles and Brit, but with friends. So kind of like the Muppet Show meets Bill Maher. I don't really know. I don't really know. We haven't planned it out. You know, we don't really plan things. So the Muppet Show <laughs> meets Bill Maher. I like that. <laughs> That's fun. Well, and, and one of the things that you guys have been doing so well, and I would say it's so important, candidly, is is talking about the issues that a lot of people don't want to talk about. And right now, what we're seeing, and I actually just uh, got off a conversation here with Kenny Cody, and we were talking about the idea of wokeism. Uh, but let's talk about changing words. Wokeism kind of goes hand in hand with the, and we were talking beforehand, the left has seemingly liked to change a lot of words for some reason. And I would dare say, Britain, I would love to hear your thoughts is that because as you can change words and as definitions change, then all of a sudden you can maybe do a little bit more with the words than you, you thought you could otherwise. Yeah. So um, we, 
I, I'm watching this. I'm watching this go on for a long time, slowly. But now it seems to be something that is happening consistently. Anytime something happens, not only do they change words, they change terms, they change what's happening. Um, it's like we're just watching in real time the world get flipped every day. Uh, we watched Joe Biden say a couple weeks ago that he wanted unity. He consistently says he wants unity, um, which means people would come together despite their differences and we would focus on the things that, you know, we can unify on as Americans. But what he meant was, this is a threat, you're gonna do what we want. Um, so that is completely different than what they're trying to say. I, I mean, anybody could, I could throw a stone and think of something that uh, really the left has changed the meaning of. We talked about, um, you know, he just said the other day that like, no amendment is absolute and- right. We know what he meant by that because I don't think he meant the 13th Amendment is an absolute. I mean, maybe he did. I've, I've seen some of the other things he says. <laughs> uh, maybe he meant the 19th Amendment is an absolute. But it seems to me that he's talking specifically about the Second Amendment. It's the same thing when they say guns are weapons of war. And then they choose something like arbitrary that's never been used in a war, but because right. it makes a pew pew noise, like that's what we've decided is a weapon of war. Um, it's like the, oh gosh, now I can't remember her name, but who called childcare infrastructure. And everything is now infrastructure. Kristen Gillibrand, that's right. Yes. Everything is infrastructure. I did a yes. show with Brad Palumbo on this. Yes, everything is now infrastructure. Okay, are firearms infrastructure? Uh, I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out like what is an infrastructure at this point, because now we've said that anything that we think is going to make society better is infrastructure. I could say probably without a doubt, I could make a case that firearms have done more to advance society than any other thing they could think of, including marauds. Yep. I was going to say, well, and this kind of goes to the point that you were, you were making, and we talked about this again beforehand, is that also as words change, then, then it's hard to have some type of objective reality. I mean, if, if we can't even begin to have some common agreement, right, of, of what words mean, what definitions of words mean, then how are we able to effectively build policy, right, laws that as a society we can all enter into and agree, yes, this is what the law means based on our societal agreement of the words meaning what they mean. And we've seen this. This was wild to me, too. We watch, like, dictionary companies go back and openly change the definition of words to fit the new definitions. And not only I think is that damaging to a society being able to have a, a real discourse, but it's also it's damaging to history because now since we're setting the new words and the new uh, the new meaning of these words in the 2021 time frame, then all of a sudden the words when you're comparing them to how they were used in the 1960s completely lose context. And I would say that's part of why when we look at the, the Federalist Papers, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the meaning of the original words have changed so much as time has gone on. And as we've assigned more and more or rather changed those meanings, it's allowed an opening for the perversion of the intended policies and, and maybe that speaks to an inherent flaw in the system, Brett. Uh, I would agree with that. I, I think that there's not, I think that there's two things going on. There's a flaw in the system that people are able to exploit, but also we have a huge subsect of society who feels that either the situation is hopeless or they just don't care. And they're willing to just kind of roll downhill with whatever happens. Um, we watch it with people that will openly say a well-regulated militia means that the government will regulate a militia against the government. Like, and other people will be like, well, I guess if that's what they say it means, it's like just all you have to do is open a history book to know that, that that's not true. Um, but we continue to see it. We continue to see people um, will argue with the left changing the way that something works. Like we watch it every day with racism, with the word racism or the word white supremacist, where people go, that's a white supremacist. Oh, well, I don't agree with white supremacy. Okay, but that's not what you should be fighting against. You should stop them right there and be like, I reject your narrative because you don't know what words mean. So. 
I mean, sorry, I have a little. Oh, little. don't worry. No, <laughs> it, it, well, that's part of the the whole podcasting experience. This is real life, folks. This is what we experience. We we this. I mean, people. We don't shut off. We we always are doing something in our in our world. So let's kind of um you know move forward here, Britt. You, we're talking about the words not necessarily meaning what they should be meaning. Um, and maybe it's now on us to start leading by example and doing some things differently, right? So yeah. how can we maybe as those in the greater liberty movement take the changing of words, the, the wokeism culture, and there is a demand for it, for better or for worse than the market right now, but how can we enter now into the conversation where a lot of these folks currently are and maybe present the ideas of liberty as an alternative and show that not only do words matter, but actually we're finding a lot of the words that people have changed do are in fact rooted in liberty. So uh, one of the things that I like to do, and if you've ever you know watched Larry Sharp, you've probably seen this um, or kind of any pragmatic libertarian personality talk about it, we need to take all of these words just completely out of our dialect when we're not talking to liberty people. And I'm not talking about words like racism and white supremacy because there's a different conversation that goes on on say a Twitter or Facebook than there is in real life. Um, there's a different conversation that happens on Clubhouse where people are able to talk to each other. Um, like on a telephone, you would speak with someone and just someone sitting in your living room. I, for one, when people say, you know, all these people on TV that are rioting are anarchists. Well, if you're in a liberty circle, that means something completely different. That means agorism and just not having the government involved. But if you're talking to like, you know, your maybe slightly conservative grandma who's now calling everyone an anarchist, <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe you need to just not use that terminology terminology. And really, I would say talk to people about the issues that they're interested in and bring them to liberty in that way. Yes. I, I love libertarians. I love liberty-minded people. I always say they're the smartest person in the room and nobody wants to listen to them because they won't shut up. And I'm sorry. I, I, it's like, I know, I know somebody just got in trouble this week for saying libertarians are getting weird. And, uh, but here's the thing. It's not that we're getting weird. We always kind of have been. We're always like, this is the right way. And let me hit you over the head with it until you don't listen to me anymore. Maybe ask people like, well, what is it that you find is an issue that you're having or that you're seeing that's a problem? And then talk to them in a way that would convey, you know, a, a message of how, how to solve that problem in a liberty minded way. And that's really, really, really how we need to start talking to people. I cannot say this enough. Libertarians, you can't just yell at people and then say you're going to run for president and do nothing. It will not work. It's not working. We can pretend it's going to work. We know that we have the right value system. We know we have the absolute like right way that things should be and the way that people are meant to be. But we don't have the right messaging. We are not pragmatic. I'm sorry. Like we we need to get better about it. The left has gone out for 40 plus years and went into the community, infiltrated their community, community organizers, became educators, all of the groundwork. They did all the groundwork. So now it's not difficult to convince an 18 year old boy who really doesn't want to be drafted into the military that communism is maybe a viable option. Do you guys, that didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen because the left was just like, you have to do things this way and you need to be a communist and go Stalin. Like that never happened. That's just the caricature, caricature that we made to them because we were so busy. We've been so busy making fun of them because what they're saying on its face is really stupid that we've missed what they're doing well, we're sitting there making memes because we're great at making memes and we are terrible at making policy. Whew. Wow. You were, you were going there. And I was going to say, well, I didn't want to interrupt Britt because it's so refreshing to hear what we've been talking about here on the program now being echoed back. Because when I first started about three and a half years ago into this greater Liberty world doing my show, it was pretty much a conversation that you'd hear on any podcast. Here's why libertarians are right. And here's why everybody else is so stupid for not paying attention to us. Why aren't they listening? I don't get it. 
and it would just be this this constant complaining. It'd be this constant just it was really just going in a circle endlessly of identifying a problem, doing the same thing over again, getting the exact same res result, identifying the problem again, still doing the same thing, and guess what? Still getting the exact same result. So as we entered into the conversation here, the Brian Nichols show, I was like, listen, I'm a sales guy. I, I'm a sales executive by trade. I talk about this kind of stuff all day long with, with IT directors, which candidly, I love IT directors, but are they the most talkative people in the world? Not necessarily. So being able to peak interest with an IT director, I was like, maybe... These are my people, the libertarians. They're kind of like the IT directors out there. So how can we pique libertarians' interest, but also how can we take libertarians and make them better advocates for liberty? And Britt, you hit the nail on the head. It's not by standing there and telling them what's important and telling them how wrong they are for not paying attention to what's important, but rather, we say it all the time here in the show, entering into a conversation that they're already having in their mind, meeting them where they're at and talking about the issues they're, they actually care about. Ask them questions. They'll tell you. And then once they tell you, instead of saying, well, here's the libertarian response and give them, you know, whatever Murray Rothbard or Hayek response you want to give, actually go ahead and say, well, yes, I agree with you. Empathize with them. I know libertarians freak out at the word empathy, but people <laughs> want to know you care. That's why people were looking at Trump and for better or for worse saying, we love you because they look at him and they said, he cares about us. And hey, Britt, you, you mentioned this. That's why a lot of folks in the left also looked at folks like Bernie Sanders or AOC as their champions because they believe in their heart of hearts that they care about them, that Bernie, he's going to go ahead and get rid of the student loan debt because he knows how hard it is on the average person to deal with that. So they see all the, they see all the, the problems that are out there and they're looking for people to truly address the solutions, not to be called stupid or to be made feel bad, but rather show that there's actually a positive step, a positive path forward that doesn't, and this is where maybe we can turn the conversation, it doesn't necessarily have to involve big government. It can actually take place with our limited government, private sector solutions that honestly are already out there. We just need to do a better job promoting them. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, Living in Los Angeles gives me kind of an edge on how people, on how to converse with people that I don't necessarily agree with. Um, I can't just go in my real life being angry at everyone outwardly if I want to make any sort of headway, any sort of, um, have any sort of conversation with anyone. Internally, yes, I'm very angry. Um, no, Nobody sitting here right now is saying, AOC or Bernie Sanders is right, or that they even actually do care. I don't think either one of us think that they are like champions of the people, but they have a message that people want to hear. And we need to find a way to do that. And I know that it's hard. I empathize with liberty minded people because telling people that personal responsibility is the best way to handle a situation is really, really tough. I have two little kids. Anyone with kids knows. You can talk until you're blue in, a face, blue in the face about why you should clean your bedroom, why a clean bedroom is better for you. But if a kid doesn't want to do it, they're not going to want to do it. So you have to find a way to motivate them. And the way to do that is never going to be like, just do what you want. I'm kicking you out to, when you're 18. Like that's never going to teach them to clean their room. Eventually it will. But when you have another parent like the government who will always be their fail safe, it will never work. So we have to be more creative. We have to be more pragmatic. We have to find a way to talk to people. And um, that's actually one of the reasons why we're changing the format of the Freckles and Brit show. It's, Ooh, it's yeah, the perfect, perfect segue. <laughs> Dig into that change. I, I want to hear what was inspiring this ch transition because you guys, honestly, you've been having a lot of great conversations with a lot of great people. And I get a lot of value out of your show. So where did you see maybe there's an, a pathway that you could maybe make a, a even more of a substantial difference? So one of the things that we noticed really quickly is that um, we were kind of thought of as not authorities, but like that we knew a lot about Liberty and Freckles and I do, we talk about it all the time. This is what we do. This is our space. Uh, but very quickly we decided to just kind of, like, oh, no, I'm dumb. I don't know. You know, like, we're just joking around and, and whatever and kind of made a joke of what we were doing. And we realized that's not an effective way to talk to people because not only do people want answers in a pragmatic, empathetic way, they want answers from somebody that they actually trust. 
So that was one thing that we thought, okay, that needs to change. Two, we realized that we can't just have people on our show that echo everything that we're saying. Yes. It, it, it just can't happen. We need to be able to have more conversations with people. And three, we're really funny. Like I'm, I'm telling you, like I'm, I'm self grandulizing myself, but uh, we, we wanted to bring more of that into the show. And so that's kind of more, we, we wanted to add more entertainment because here's the thing. If people are entertained, they're going to want to listen to you. Yep. And so we are just going to trick people into listening to us by being entertained. <laughs> being people. And, and this is, this is what we, I literally just had a conversation with uh, with Chris Guizetta. We did a conversation out of sight, out of mind. If if you're not in people's um, purview, then they don't know you exist. Number one, number two, people want to connect with people that they trust, that they feel are real, authentic people. And too often, we libertarians get stuck in just being the people who can regurgitate the, the most information. And I don't know about you, Britt, but I have this magical device called Google, and I can look for anything out there. Or if it's censored, I can go to DuckDuckGo. But what I need to do as a libertarian is to take all that information and then to, to make it so it's, number one, easy to understand. But number two, it's pertinent and relevant to the person that you're talking to. They don't need a Google search result. They, they need somebody to help refine and show the things that do matter, but matter to them. And, and that I think is something that is a tangible action item that libertarians can, can take away, not just from this conversation, but from candidly what we've been doing here at the program. I mean, that's why we're expanding the Patreon. We're going to be doing levels to help teach people how to sell liberty to their average person, to your family, to your friends. Like, Okay, here, sneak behind the curtain, right? I'm actually going to be dropping here in the next couple of weeks, maybe a month or so, an ebook. And it's going to be four easy steps that you can take right now to help sell liberty to friends and family. It's easy. And, and, and this is something we can all do. So I, I encourage people to watch the new format when the show comes out here in June, because as in, in the meantime, obviously, Britt, they can go through and dig through the treasure troves of awesome episodes because you guys have been doing an awesome job. And I cannot stress that enough of entering into conversations that people actually are caring about and talking about the issues in a way that makes an, maybe a person who's not Liberty uh, curious, more Liberty curious, makes them want to ask more questions and Hey, if we pique people's interest, that's half the, the battle is getting them to ask that next question. And the next question should be, why? Tell me more. And if we get them to do that, man, we, we've got them. That, and that's that's where we're missing out a lot. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. We've, we've really tried to focus on that. And there's going to be more of that. We plan on bringing a lot of our guests back that really were just great guests that we'd love to ask them more questions that maybe we didn't have a chance to before and add some other things. We want to make it easy and we want to give Liberty information in a digestible way. Um, one of the things I'm doing outside of this is starting an ASMR channel. Some people hate it. Some people love it. That What's is that? just, um, it's basically uh, like a tingle response that some people get when they hear certain noises or have certain like tapping or whispering or talking. It relaxes people. It, um, I did they not get, know this existed. That's why yeah, I'm asking. So, I, I'm sure that a lot of people out there who are like, what's that? Uh, when I, when I have the channel up, I would love to come back and we can talk about more then. This is just a side project, but all of mine is going to be focused on, uh, inaudible whispering and whispering, uh, Rothbard and, uh, different, uh, liberty minded, you know, something just reading the constitution in a very relaxing way so that you can just fall asleep listening to these things. So huh. the entertainment side is, you know, the, the ASMR and then the content will be liberty based. So just trying to find easier ways for people to digest things. Um, I think it's just, something we have to do. I, I mean, yeah. I've been in and around Hollywood for so long that I'm starting to see you have to be able to sell to people. And, and it does seem to be working. These ways do seem to be working. I went door knocking a couple months ago with a candidate who was a liberty minded candidate. And I've been talking to my neighbors and things like that, just asking them what's important to you. What is important to you? I have moms. I'm, I'm not even joking, you guys, one of the moms that I was talking to 
was a psychologist for the public school district in the area that I'm in. She has just registered her children with my homeschool charter. How about like, that? Like, this wow. is how you have conversations with people. Like, what a this story. Is what a story. And, and folks, like, I can't stress this enough. Telling stories is one of the best ways to have a message stick with somebody. So, Britt, that story is so powerful. I mean, the fact that she is in the public school and she's like, hey, by the way, get my kid out. Like, that speaks volumes. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just we really need to have conversations with people. And I'm not saying there's not a place for Twitter takedowns. I literally just <laughs> told someone they were drinking dumb bitch juice this morning on Twitter. So like there's there's a place for that, but it can't be our whole platform. It it just it can't. No. It can't and, and honestly, Britt, as we wrap up, like we're seeing it's changing. People I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it from you know Twitter, Facebook conversations on podcasts, the content that people are producing, it's getting better. People are figuring out what works, but also what doesn't work. And as we start to figure that out more and enter into conversations, instead of preaching, but rather asking questions and then shutting up and listening, that's when I think we're going to find that more and more people are going to start to say, okay, Tell me some more about this weird liberty stuff. And, and as they start to ask those questions, obviously, folks, it's imperative for us to point them to amazing podcasts and, and shows like the, the amazing Fab Show, Freckles and Brit, which will be uh, re, uh, relaunching as we get towards the summertime in June. So, Brit, with all that being said, uh, let's obviously... Uh, as we end the show, turn folks over towards where they can go ahead, not just support the amazing Freckles and Brit show, but as they can see, um, if they're watching the video version of the program, they can see at Tweets by Brit. Um, they can follow you on Twitter, but where else can folks go ahead and support all the work you're doing? They can go, you know, on YouTube and find Freckles and Brit show. We're also on D Live, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you can have like a podcatcher. Um, we are streaming live Friday nights, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also, you guys, I am on Clubhouse. If you're on Clubhouse, find me, Salt by Brit. I am there. I will talk to you. I will open, you know, a room up if you just want to chat privately or if you want to be part of the public conversation. I'm also an admin there for one of the healthy debates rooms, which is one of the bigger um, debate rooms on Clubhouse. And um, I am giving away five clubhouse invites this week so if you have ios if you have an iphone you can dm me on twitter at tweets by brit um this friday i will be picking five people randomly and giving them a clubhouse invite and then um uh in june we'll be giving away more I love it. And and folks, please do me a favor. Make sure you go ahead, support Brit, support Freckles. They are doing amazing work at the, uh, as we mentioned, Freckles and Brit show. With that being said, though, thank you for all the work you're doing, Brit. And with that being said, thanks for joining the Brian Nichols show. Thanks so much. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, that's going to wrap up my conversation with Britt from the Freckles and Britt Show. Thank you so much, Britt, for joining us on the program. And folks, if you enjoyed today's episode, well, do me a favor. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up. That's a new thing to say. Give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. That's fun. And hit the notification button, that little bell there, like somewhere like there? Ballpark? Yeah, hit that. Yeah, if you're listening to this, you're like, what's he talking about? Because there's a video now, guys. Video. So uh, please go ahead, hit the subscribe, but also uh, head over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast catching app and go ahead and hit us a subscribe there. And if you are using Apple, please go ahead, give us a quick five-star rating and review. I greatly appreciate it. And whatever value you get from the program, well, please give me a shout. Let me know. And honestly, it's the best way for us to be able to reach more people because they, they pay attention. They listen to what we're talking about here on the program. They listen to what you're talking about and what you're enjoying. So tell folks why you enjoy the program and why you subscribe to Yes. As I mentioned, every single episode, three, sometimes four, sometimes five episodes per week like you got this week. Um, so please go ahead. Uh, also, as you share the episodes, please go ahead and just tag me at B Nichols Liberty, wherever it is you may be doing that at Twitter, Facebook, Minds.com, or Parlor.com if it's Twitter. I'll make sure I give you a retweet. Um, and folks, uh, also, if you want to go ahead and get in touch with me because you enjoyed today's episode, email me, brian at briannicholsshow.com. Coming up tomorrow, we have Nolan Gray talking about how, my goodness, California, you guys really... <laughs> 
you messed up here. All these intense environmental regulations that are supposed to help save the environment, well, we're finding out, guess what? They maybe do a little more harm than good. All that and more on Friday's fantastic episode. So that being said, it's Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show for Brit from The Freckles and Brit Show. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.